about group dynamics and the adolescent self and my relationship to those two concepts um, this year. And so my overall project, project consisted of working with the eighth graders in December and January, and then to end it all, we went on a three-day expedition in February. Um, I had the chance to go to youth initiative for the past four years of my life, and the curriculum really focuses on building up adolescents to start reflecting on their personal growth, their leadership development, and their self-awareness. Um, and I really value this experience, and I really wanted to give this opportunity to other young adults. I am seriously not the same person. I walked, um, who I, I'm not the same person who I am when I walked in as a freshman, the way I look at the world, the way I interact with my relationships, my family, my friends are like, completely different. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this project. And the other reason was um, because I wanted to learn how to be a facilitator and mentor like my teachers were to me. So those are the biggest whys of my project. So my project started back in my junior year. I accompanied Dave on the freshman expedition as an assistant, but more as an observer, observing how he structured the whole five days and how he facilitated activities and exercises. So when it hit September, I started thinking about what kind of program do I want to create for young adults. And I decided on uh, helping young adults start to use their voice and think about their leadership, uh, practice compassion and empathy, and think about their self-worth and uh, self-reflection. Sadly, this program did not happen. Um, I was planning on meeting with six to eight graders after school on Wednesdays. And a week leading up to the event, I only had two kids sign up. Um, so I canceled that, but it was a blessing in disguise because I got to work with the eighth grade. I contacted Betty Link and we talked about what and how and why I was gonna why I wanted to work with them. And so we started off in December. Um, my whole curriculum is based on experiential learning. I hope you can move the spotlight this way because I'm gonna very um, <laughs> all of my curriculum is based off of experiential learning, which I had a lot in my uh, whole um, high school and Pleasant Ridge career. So basically you give a group an activity and they experience it, and then you reflect and process and build insight, and from there they can learn and apply what they've learned to their lives and their relationships. So Dave accompanied me to all of the sessions, and he has had a lot of years and time uh, experiencing uh, and leading young adults. And so it was really helpful for him to help be with me, but also more to be a mirror effect for me. So he would give me feedback, advice. Um, we would always debrief after talking about what I could improve on and uh, talking about what I did well. So the first session was an icebreaker session and an information gathering. We wanted to get to know the students and we wanted the curriculum to apply to them and what they wanted to work on. Um, and so we gave them a challenge because we wanted to see how their class would work together. And so the challenge was um, to all 25 of them be on a tarp, which is like this big. <laughs> In this picture you can see they're very squeezed on it. And they had to flip it over without touching the ground. Like any group challenge, it starts off with everyone screaming their ideas as they can the job. I still do that. So I know better. Um, but, uh, yes, so they successfully slowly start to settle down, listen to one another, um, and they successfully did it. So then we talked about their class dynamic and how it was in that challenge and also overall in their daily classroom life. We talked about their strengths and weaknesses, and I asked them to tell us um, what are areas of growth that you guys want to um, challenge yourself to move past? So they wanted to respect each other more, communicate better. Um, there is a lot of leadership and a lot of voices, but there's not so much um, willingness to follow each other. And so they wanted to work on that. And they wanted to work on listening to each other. So this moved on to our second session together on communication and positive relationships. And so we started this session off with talking about different communication styles. And so me and Dave um, acted out a couple skits. Um, I was a McDonald's worker and he would come for food for me. And um, I would completely give him the wrong order and he would uh, communicate with me in four different styles. The first one was passive, 
where you can just kind of walk away and be like, oh, dang, I got my own food. <laughs> Second one was passive aggressive, where you go and talk to Betty and be like, wow, McDonald's food really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and the third one was you would just kind of blow up in my face aggressively. And the fourth one was assertive, where you would just simply ask, oh, this is not my food. Can I have my right one? And of course, I would be a business right So we all realized that assertive communication was the best time. Um, and so the second part was uh, talking about what style is most used in their class and what kind of patterns negatively or positively affects the style they use. We then split off into small groups and talked about individual communication styles and our patterns and how it changes through our families, our coaches, and our teachers, and how we communicate differently and why that is. We moved on to thinking about communication in positive relationships. So I divided the uh, groups, I divided them up into groups, and I gave them each five concepts, and they had to think about which concept leads to which one. And so we came back as a group, and we figured out like, the right order. My dad argued that there was no order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no we all realized that clear communication leads to clear expectations, and when you have clear expectations, you can have consistent follow-through, and when you have all those three things, it, you can have trust in the relationship, and then it moves in a circle. So I think we can all uh, say that if we were to follow this circle perfectly, we would all have pretty good um, relationships, but of course life gets in the way, uh, miscommunications happen, feelings comes up, all kinds of stuff. And so we talked about how trust can really be broken in like a snap of a finger, um, but it takes a while to build up, and so this circle is kind of helping you what are ways that we can build up trust. We talked about how the circle can thrive um, and how if you're kind of struggling in relationships, you can kind of pinpoint to this circle about like where are we breaking down and then you can go there and work on that area. We talked about what uh, areas you have direct control over. So maybe you don't have direct control over if the, your partner or your class trusts you or not, but you can um, work on clearly communicating, following through, and whatnot. All of these sessions were um, a way of language building, so I wanted to create common ground in the class so we all kind of knew what we were talking about and so we could work on the areas of growth that they said. So we were all, um, I was presenting these exercises um, and to language build. So the last session was only an hour long, and this was just an activity to kind of build awareness, to get to know each other better, to build compassion and empathy, and I would simply just read a statement and if they uh, resonated with it, they would cross the line. So this moved on to a week before the expedition when I had 20 students out of 25 signed up to go on that expedition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. In January when I had seven students, I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not all that funny that I didn't sign up. Thank you guys. Yeah. Um, but so I had an expedition meeting with the parents and the students just to get the logistical uh, part all figured out. And so that week was really hectic for me. I had two hockey games that week. My curriculum was not fully planned out yet. I didn't really have a purpose. Um, definitely cried about that because I didn't know. But, and also, slowly throughout the week, the weather was getting colder and colder on Friday. And it dawned on me that I would have to cancel um, the first night of the exhibition, which is really sad. But um, I was driving back from my hockey on Tuesday in a compact car with all of my family. Um, we were crying and we did a family fight a little bit. Um, and the stress was building up and up and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to cancel this tomorrow. Um, but my family is amazing and we started brainstorming for two hours after we settled our fight. Um, and we, we, looked, uh, we ended up relocating to the large community center which was awesome, and then the next day we'd go out to the ADR for Saturday night. So the, expedi the expedition leaders were me, um, Bean Vaz, and Dave Kui. Both of them had a lot of experience in that subject, and so it was really nice to have two people who I trust and know to accompany me, to give me feedback, and then also like totally know when to step back and let me have the lead, and actually step back and let me have the lead to challenge me, even though I was a little scared. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. Uh, so the expedition started on Friday. We left the initiative. We arrived at the Kukulak Clark Community Center. There was nervousness, excitement, um, loud screams. <laughs> um, but so I wanted to kind of tone set 
it and kind of tell them what I wanted from them and tell, kind of let them know what to expect a little bit. So I started that off uh, talking about what is an expedition. We're calling this three-day trip in the woods slash in the community center an expedition. <laughs> so like, why are we doing that? Um, and so we brainstormed together and we figured out that an expedition is a journey. It could be a day, an hour, a week, a couple months, your whole lifetime, but it, there's challenges, there's amazing points, and it's really just about the unknown. You don't know what's going to happen. So then we just started talking about the purpose and space, and so I told them that I was making space for them to reflect on where they're at. I changed a lot from my eighth grade year to my freshman year. I like looked back on my eighth grade year. I was like, I was in eighth grade. I was feeling those feelings. Like, so you change so much. So I wanted them to get a pause from their busy lives, their phones, their family, their school, um, and just be with each other and also just reflect on like where they're at in that moment. I wanted to work in their class dynamic a little more. Uh, and I want them to appreciate one another, um, to build trust, and to again reflect on their self. Um, you start to question the world, I think, when you become start to become an adolescent. You start to think about who you are, how people see you, um, how you represent yourself. And so I wanted them to have a chance to reflect on that as well. And also just have fun. Yeah. My expectations. <laughs> My expectations were to be respectful of one another, take responsibility of their actions, uh, be engaged. They all chose to come on this trip, so I was expecting a lot. <laughs> uh, no exclusive relationships, and then just respecting the leaders' boundaries when we put some. Um, so I have some solo journal times. It was really loud when we got there. It's a very echoey room. Um, <laughs> we were playing cards. There's a lot of shouts. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that. <laughs> but so I wanted to kind of chill the mood a little bit before our discussion around no fire. <laughs> so I, we took a little bit, like 30 minutes just to kind of like settle down and then it moved on into our first night together. And the discussion was their thoughts on eighth grade and how they are mentally, emotionally, and socially and what they are feeling. I think it was really cool for the students to hear each other's thoughts um, because I think many, many times sometimes you make me feel alone in some feelings, but when you start to hear other people, you start to feel a little bit better and realize that you're not alone. <laughs> um, and then I transition to their future um, and their new beginning that they're about to embark on going to high school. And so we, uh, we heard some thoughts and feelings about how they're um, reflecting on that too. And so that moved into fears. And so we all anonymously wrote down our fears and what we are scared about for the future. And then we all put it in a hat and read one another's fears. And then it was kind of like a sentiment of releasing them and letting them go. And then I ended on intention where they would put out something that they wished to happen in the future. Um, and that was really beautiful note to end on. We headed off to uh, Campsite N, which is right below Black Hawk Rock, if you guys know where that is. Um, we dropped all of our stuff off there and then had the parents come back and drop us off in the old 131 show right by Rockton, and so we would hike all day. Um, I asked two students to be navigators, Isaac and Aiden volunteered, and they started navigating and digging the way, and then they, they came up to me and Dave, and, and they were like, Can we? Can we go back country? And you were like, why not? And so I right away let us up this huge hill. <laughs> Maybe got us lost a little bit, but I think you were going to go the whole time. So right before lunch, I wanted to stop and talk about leadership. And so I asked them each to think about a leader in their life and think about why do they look up to them and why do they think they're a leader uh, and what characteristics um, you look up to and see in them. And so then we kind of just defined what leadership is as a group. And then we went, uh, we, we moved to their defining of leadership into discovering different styles. And I think some people uh, sometimes think that the, the, the leader is the loudest one, the one that's kind of like says their opinion right away um, and is like quick to speak. But there are definitely different styles. And so we figured out our dominant style. And we also talked about what makes a good leader good. And so this is the quadrant that they um, represented in that 
picture before. And so there's four different styles in this exercise. And what truly makes a good group function well is when you have a diverse amount of these four styles. If a group doesn't have like one or two of them, sometimes they can, it's harder for the group to move forward and make decisions. And what's really interesting about eighth grade class is that they were actually very evenly amount, uh, they're evenly dispersed throughout the four quadrants, which is really cool. So the cool cucumber and hot tamale is representing um, how you feel emotionally. So cool cucumber is like, I, I'm a glossy palm, I have no emotion. Hot tamale is I cry at seven movies. I, everyone knows how I feel. Wind and water is how you express yourself on the outside. So wind is, um, I say my opinion, everyone knows what I think, and water is, I don't say my opinion, no one knows what I'm feeling or thinking. No. <laughs> it's pretty extreme. It's pretty, yeah. Thank you. So. <laughs> um, then we might cook the black hot rock for lunch. Um, and we got to the campsite, we had a couple things to do. Um, just gather firewood, set up some tents, and just also hang out. So right before uh, dinner, I decided to do one more activity on where do you stand. And this was on values. And the reason why I wanted to do this was because I really believe that values shape who you are and really represent how you are in the world to people, how you treat the world, how you treat spaces, how you treat groups. And they really uh, defi are a defining quality of you. And so I wanted them to start reflecting on what kind of values they live through. And I think in high school you truly um, start to like live into certain values more than others when like before. And so the objective of this activity was for them to reflect on how they interact with certain values in their daily lives. And so I would start by reading um, a definition of a value, and then there's four spots where they can go stand. So the one was I value it, I speak about it, I practice it when it's convenient, and it is integrated into how I live my life. And so these are a couple of values that I chose to do. And so for example, if I were to read, uh, say, honesty, and then read the definition, um, if a student didn't feel like they were very honest, um, they would maybe go to I speak about honesty, because I do value honesty, but I don't really live to it. And so this really helps you um, learn about what um, kind of values you do live through. I did this actually once, and I really um, triggered my thoughts and questions about who I am. And so this led into an activity uh, at the end of the night. And so we were all cozy up around the fire. It was pretty cold out. It was the first night that we were outside. And I really wanted to end the last night that we had together um, really well. And so I wanted to really hear uh, their truths, kind of, and I wanted to hear from each, hear from each student, and I wanted each student to kind of share something about themselves. So I asked them to reflect, to think about you, and reflect on how you interact with it, and how you engage with it. And so each student shared um, a value, and they shared their story, um, and it was really beautiful to hear this, uh, the students speak very truthfully in this space in the wilderness in the winter. So then it became, good night, I found these girls with a lot of snacks in their tent. <laughs> <laughs> um, they shared with me really good <laughs> um, So I was planning on waking up an hour early before everyone to have a real like experience of being a facilitator. Waking up, building a fire, maybe drinking some tea, maybe going to the bathroom. And, and just have like here silence and solitude. Um, that didn't happen. Uh, I was awoke by a scream from one of the students yelling, "My pants are frozen!" <laughs> uh, I thought I had slept in, and I looked at my alarm, and it was. I looked at my clock, and it was five minutes before my alarm. That was five minutes before your thing. And right when he screamed up that across the campsite. I started to hear laughs and giggles, and this class does do not have many voices. <laughs> it's, it's not unless they're up there, very um, But they all woke up, and so me and Dave got out of the tent slowly. He couldn't believe that they were up. Um, and we were making the fire, and slowly the students started to come out of their tents, but they like couldn't get their like they weren't walking right, and they like couldn't get their shoe their feet in their shoes, and they were telling me that their their shoes were frozen. 
And Dave kind of looks at me and is like, ooh, we forgot to tell them. And so, basically, <laughs> uh, we told them some tips about how to keep warm. <laughs> and one thing we forgot to tell them was put their boots under their sleeping bags so they're not frozen in the morning. <laughs> My boots are not frozen, I'm sorry. <laughs> And I wanted some, there's two values that I have really learned um, at Youth Initiative to really enjoy, is gratitude and growth. And so I wanted to end this trip on appreciating each of the students. And so we had a little appreciation circle, and this one is kind of special where um, the whole group appreciates one person for two to three minutes, and then you move on. And you always leave this feeling really heart warm. And, um, it's just really nice to end a trip like that. I did it on the freshman expedition as well, when I was leaving it or observing it. And the other value was growth. And so what I have learned um, at Youth Initiative is that sometimes when you have a big experience, either having an expedition or me on like, the Guatemala trip, coming back from it is like really sometimes challenging because you learn so much about yourself, um, the group, uh, the world, and it's sometimes hard to integrate what you learn into your daily routine. And sometimes you just honestly get sucked back into your daily routine and sometimes forget. So I wanted to do a little reflection and a little bit of asking students about what they learned and, uh, on this trip. And, oh my god, sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> and what was impactful? Okay. Give me up. Um, this is an attempt at self It's really only a 20 minute process. <laughs> so that was the end of my expedition part um, and my uh, time with the 8th grade. And so the other uh, part of my project was a one-on-one -on -one mentorship. And the reason why I wanted to do this was because I also wanted to learn how to mentor with a big group, but then also learn how to um, have a relationship with a one-on-one -on -one student. And so an opportunity just walked um, into my life randomly throughout the year. And so I um, uh, mentored this young like, woman from public school who was also in 8th grade and she was just dealing with some things like normal 8th graders do. Um, we would meet weekly for one hour uh, and we would just meditate together, do some uh, check-ins, um, journal and do some collage art and then also just hang out and for I was just kind of a support for her other than her family and her family. So my total hours were 264, um, 103 with the freshman expedition, 9 hours in the one-on-one -on -one mentorship, 65 hours of brainstorming and lesson planning, 56 hours with the 8th grade of the expedition, and 25 with Dave, and 6 hours just all the various stuff. So I want to say thank you to Susan Townsley for giving me some skills to mentor a one one -on -one, uh, relationship and Stonehouse Counseling for allowing me space to work with the young woman. I would like to thank KBR and the Marge Community Center, um, my parents and my family for being as passionate as I am and um, always just supporting me when I was either crying or angry or <laughs> just happy. Yeah, happy. happy. <laughs> Thank you for always just um, helping me grow as a person. Thank you for this clicker that you didn't want me to use <laughs> as well. Thank you to Pleasant Ridge for being a school that allows a senior to walk in and work with one of their classes. Also a space where I can work. Um, thank you especially to Betty Lane for trusting me with her class for last year. Thank you to the 8th grade class. Uh, huge thank you to them. I'm so appreciated of every single one of you. Um, you brought excitement, enthusiasm, thoughts, your ideas, and insights to all the sessions that we had together. Um, all the ex expectations that I have for you guys, you truly like surpassed them. Um, I'm really proud uh, to have worked with you.
And the presence and engagement levels that you guys brought just astounded me. It was amazing. There's so many of you, and you still were like, your attention was there. Um, you guys are beautiful young adults, and I hope the best for your future endeavors. Um, thank you, Bean Vaz, for accompanying me on the expedition. Uh, that week was really hectic. I did not communicate with her very well. Um, and she totally went with the flow. She, on Friday, she's like, so what are we doing? <laughs> so thank you a lot. Uh, I know you were very busy, and so it's a lot of fun. And last but not least, thank you, Dave. Uh, I truly don't have words to describe how much gratitude I have for you. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> how I want to um, be as a mentor for young adults. You have held an incredible space at Youth Initiative for students to grow. Um, thank, you for, oh <laughs> thank you for listening, uh, supporting, and challenging me throughout this whole process. Um, thank you for trusting me coming on the freshman expedition and the future one. Uh, thank you for seeing me for me and just like truly believing that I can do this. Um, just thank you, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> um, and so, could someone come to the house lights? Um, I'm going to have all the eighth graders who are here stand up so you guys can see who they are. And then, uh, I'm also going to invite a couple of them. Mark the middle. So yeah, questions. Vicky? I'm curious what some of the values were that the eighth graders shared the eighth graders shared in that in that activity that you guys did. Um they, she is wondering what are some of the values that they shared during the where do you stand exercise? Um <laughs> mine was kindness. Do you want to share a little bit about how she interacted with it? Just like, what? Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, I just. I was thinking about the way you stand with it. Oh, yeah, it's so around the fire. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I can just feel like a not kind person and not really like, consider other people and how they might feel um, when I speak. And so. I struggle to understand people more and treat them better. Yes. <laughs> John? Uh, maybe the eighth graders can speak to like, something that's really did well, something that's really did well. <laughs> okay, so he asked um, if any of the eighth graders could speak to what I could uh, grow on and what I did well. Okay. <laughs> you did really good um, with creating like a safe space for us and just where we all felt comfortable and yeah, safe um, with you. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I also like I think that you were like a really good leader because like you were really relatable with and like I don't know. It just seemed like you were like one of like the students with us more. Uh -huh. Yeah. You can work on it? Come on. I take criticism really well.
the four different things that you're dividing into the groups, like the driver, architect. Could you explain what those mean again so the audience can maybe? Oh, gosh. Um, OK, so the, um, they, <laughs> okay, so the four quadrants um, in the leadership exercise, uh, the driver is someone who really wants to make decisions fast and um, is very decisive and outspoken. The spontaneous motivator is someone who's like really energized and like pumping up the group, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't remember the names of the other two. Uh, okay. Architect, so the, the architect one, I think, really like problem solves and like they may be slower and they may not um, make decisions very fast, but they can really look at something and like figure something out. And then the most last one. Relationship mastery. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like uh, paying attention to how people are doing off behind the scenes and just like making sure people are all right. And a lot of their work is not necessarily visible on a big scale, but it's more interpersonal. It's like data. Yeah. It's like data. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, I just want to congratulate you and Dave and Dean. Um, I don't think, I don't know if you did this on purpose, but I thought in retrospect it was a really wonderful way to, to take the eighth grade class and give them a forward-looking experience. That, that allowed them to imagine themselves being here at the school. Oh, yeah. And so I really, I don't know if you did that on purpose, but that's what you did. <laughs>